Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash thisweekend for a free $200 credit. Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by ShareFile from Citrix. Secure file transfer, build for business. Visit sharefile.com, click the microphone, and enter TWIST for a free 30-day trial. And by Igloo, an intranet you'll actually like. Visit igloosoftware.com slash thisweekend for a chance to win an iPad mini. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Calacanis. Today on the program, I have the CEO of Freedom Pop. They're making those really cool uh, iPod Touch and iPhone covers that get you 3G, 4G, unlimited data, pay-as-you-go data. It's going to disrupt, disrupt the mobile industry. Freedom Pop on today's This Week in Startups. We're going to talk about mobile. That's what it's all about, man. They said money is the root of all evil. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. It's 2013, and this is This Week in Startups, the show that is absolutely crushing it. God, we're having a great start of the year, and today is going to be an amazing program. We're leveling up, leveling up, leveling up. We're taking it to the next level. We're getting better and better and better guests, and a big part of it is the audience. The audience is suggesting great guests, and they're putting pressure on the guests, texting them, tweeting them, emailing them. You meet somebody at a conference, and you want them on the program. You say, how come you haven't been on This Week in Startups? Why haven't you been on This Week in Startups? Just assume that they know what This Week in Startups is, because they probably don't. They might. Who knows? Anyway, I was just at CES, and boy, was it wonderful to meet all you folks. Don't be that weird guy who just looks at me like two, stall- two urinals away and like out of the corner of your eye. I know you're looking at me. That's weird. Just like when we're washing our hands, say like, hey, I love the show. Just say soccer was great. Just blurt it out. Blurt out who your favorite guest was. Be brave. Come up. Say hi. I'm a normal guy. Just don't be that weird guy who's like looking at me in the corner of the eye in the restaurant and then comes up at the after dinner and is like, whatever. Or emails me like, I saw you at this thing. Just come up and say hi and like, let's talk about the show, where it's going, who your favorite guest was. And boy, was it great to have the second live episode. Phil Libin from Evernote, he brought it. What an amazing, amazing event at Rocket Space. The first event, when we had Jeff Clavier, the French dude, the angel investor extraordinaire, uh, and boy, has he made a lot of money. He's very successful. And he was a great first guest. And like 100 people came out for that. Then we built all that momentum. And like 150, 175 people came. There were as many people standing as were sitting. And it was great to see my audience, my people. And you guys had such great questions. I have the smartest audience in the business. And as I like to tell people, this is the number one podcast show about startups. It's also the only one. So I'm one of one. But I'll, I'll take it. I'll take first place any way I can get it. But boy, am I excited. Let me tell you something. I am recharged in 2013. No more audio problems. No more technical problems. Thank you, Brandis. Booking awesome guests. Thank you, Kieran. Selling the hell out of the show six weeks in advance. Thank you, DeMont. Man, I got an amazing team. And man, are we crushing it. I am so happy right now. You can hear it in my voice. I like success. And so do you. And you want to be a great entrepreneur. Or you probably are a great entrepreneur. Or maybe you're somewhere in between. This is the show for you. This is where we talk about how to build companies, how to innovate, how to disrupt, how to build something awesome in the world. And today is going to be no different. We have Stephen Stokholz. Uh, Stokholz, did I get it right? You got it. Oh, I love it. God, I, I'm, you know, I'm so dyslexic. Stephen Stokholz is uh, on the program. He is the founder. Are you co-founder or founder? Co-founder. Co-founder. I always got to get that right because, man, there's some co-founder watching the program right now going, how come I'm not on the show? Take it easy. We have one guest per show. And you're also the CEO, so that means you get the, get the top slot of Freedom Pop, and we're going to hear all about it in just a minute. Um, hey, show the, uh, show the hardware for a second. Just hold it up for a second. I'll yeah, give a little teaser a here. We got the... Uh iPod case here. That's the iPod case. Basically Very nice. On an iPod, turns it into an iPhone. Okay. We got the uh, highly publicized iPhone sleeve, which is oh boy, do to come it. out hopefully soon. Okay, that's enough. That's enough of a tease. Don't give All anything right. else. Okay. And since uh, I just spoke about the Twist Live this week in startups live, we're doing it again. We're doing the third one at Rocket Space. And listen, Rocket Space, I got to keep you guys on your toes apparently, because the food was great. 
But there were no, uh, none of those fancy San Pellegrino, Orangita, Orangata, Lemonada drinks. And you know what? My audience remembers. And the first thing somebody said to me was, hey, is Rocket Space cheaping out? I mean, the wine was good. The beer was good. The food was good. But they remember, you didn't put those Orangita uh, uh, sodas out. So keep every time, Rocket Space, try to make it a little better each time for my audience, please. You see, we're trying to make it better. We doubled the amount of people there. You got to you gotta keep investing in great food. Uh, but we're going to do it again on February 8th, February 8th in San Francisco. And man, am I going to be, I'm so excited about this. Dave McClure has been on the program before, um, but you know, it's like he was over Skype or something like that. And I can't really vibe it when it's over Skype. I need to have the person in the room. I need to look in their eyes. I need to hypnotize them. I need to use the neuro-linguistic programming and that I can get the secrets out of them. You've seen me do it before. I get people to talk about stuff that nobody else can get them to talk about. I get them to open up and I'm going to get Dave McClure to open up about his massive success with 500 startups. He's one of the most influential investors out there. And uh, boy, I can tell you, he's a really smart guy. Um, and I, I'm going to really enjoy that conversation myself personally, and I know you will too. And uh, you can get your ticket at Twist Live 3. Let me see if I can find that here. Twist Live 3. So it's T-W-I-S-T-L-I-V-E, the number three, dot eventbrite.com. And... Once again, it's very expensive to come to this. I, you know, I'm really trying to make as much money as I can off of my loyal, loyal fans. As you can see right there, I'm zooming in on the price. It's going to cost you $2. So it's going to be a three-hour event. It's going to cost you about $0.75 cents an hour, which is about a penny a minute. Uh, so it's very expensive. You're going to need to give me that $2. Now, the reason we do that is because if people pay the $2 and they have to put their credit card information in, it keeps people from buying a whole bunch of tickets. And we know if any D-bags are coming. You know, we can sort of... Um, uh, filter out people. But anyway, I, I don't tweet about this anymore because so many people want to come and there's not enough tickets and I want the super fans to come. So I only talk about it on the air. Go to twistlive3.eventbrite.com and get your $2 ticket. That's my little thank you and the team's little thank you for being a super fan. And, you know, people drove to the event from hours away. People flew in from Texas to the event. It's, it's, a, big, it's a big thing. It's like a lot of people come. There's an hour of drinks before. There's an hour, and then there's an hour and after. People go to, like, you know, bird of a feather dinners afterwards, Thai food, whatever. And uh, this is going to be no exception. It's going to be a great one. And, okay, that's one piece of housekeeping. Oh, Igloo. Let me thank our friends at Igloo. These guys have been fantastic. Igloo is the intranet that you'll actually like. Go check out um, igloosoftware.com, and you'll see their great software. We use it here. It's built on social tools you already use, like file sharing, like shared calendars, blogs, wikis, but it's all in a secure business context. It's a great way to share information, and you can use it for extranets to bring your partners in. Igloo is fully hosted and managed in the cloud, so you can focus on your work, not your IT budget. And here's how we use it at this weekend. We keep track of all of our equipment here. See this? I was like, hey, Brandis, where's, I'm spending all this money on equipment for my audience. Please keep it all uh, in one place so I know what we have. And when people come, they know where it's at. Anyway, you can see we have all this stuff here outlined very nicely. Everybody's there. I can see how many people viewed it, how many people commented on it, and we keep all of the different files associated with it. We keep everyone's contact information in here. We keep the calendar in here. It's a great way to keep the team up to date. Uh, everybody check out igloosoftware.com slash this weekend to get a free 30-day trial and enter to win an iPad mini. Yes, they know that you want that iPad mini, so go there. igloosoftware.com slash this week in. And you can just click there and say, I'm just here for the iPad mini. They're smart. They get it. Uh, oh, and by the way, their stuff is all just totally designed to work well on an uh, iPad or iPad mini in this case. Thank you so much. And if you um, want to be a super mensch and you want to really help the program, if you're a super fan, go ahead and thank at Igloo Software uh, on Twitter. Thank you at Igloo Software on behalf of the 100,000 people who download every episode of This Week in Startups and really enjoy these founder interviews uh, in our news program. So let's talk about Freedom Pop. You guys are trying to disrupt the onerous, obnoxious, overbearing contracts that these bastards at the big telcos try to force people to sign up for. Are you not? That is accurate. Though, no, you call them bastards, not me, but yes. I think, you know, I think you did say the word bad. I think you said effing bastard. No, I'm, I said that. Listen, everybody knows that these contracts are onerous, and it's unnecessarily onerous. What does it cost somebody when they buy an iPhone under like a major carrier over two years? Do you have so, any idea? I do. It's, it's north of $2,000. $2,000 if some 15-year-old kid wants to get an iPhone. 
And that, that, that excludes, you know, $200 uh, breakup fee if you want to get out early. Oh. $35 activation fees are adding on now. So there's all kinds of additional hidden fees in there as well. So explain to me, because I don't know the history of this, why is it that the carriers can get away with this absolutely ridiculous pricing and locking people in when in other aspects of our lives we're not locked in like this? That's the good question. And the reality is in the U.S., you got an oligopoly. you got AT&T and Verizon, two mm. big guys, control the market. Right. Uh, and they're almost in, you don't want to call it collusion, direct collusion, but it's an indirect collusion. One adds an activation fee, two weeks later the next adds an activation fee. They, ah. they match each other's prices. You'll see, uh, for example, Verizon launches uh, family plans. Two months later, AT&T launches family plans, same pricing. So there's almost <laughs> this collusion going on between right. the two big players. And we don't know that they're on a golf course saying, let's collude, or... If they're just doing it because it's so obvious that that's what they should do, because if there's only a, if there's a race between two people, there's no incentive for one of them to cut the margins, because it's sort of like Coke and Pepsi. Nobody's going to come out and say, "Let's make ten cent cans of soda." Exactly, and so you have huge, mar especially in the U.S., you have huge margins. What are their uh, margins guys, yeah. like? What are they, these companies? How much do they make? Uh, they anyway, on on data, for example. Yeah. Uh, margins are massive. I mean, they they get they put people in plans, by the way, deliberately uh, where there's huge breakage. So they push people into a five gig plan, for example, knowing that the average usage on a smartphone is 1.5. Big breakage. Huh. Uh, and so the margins That's are. That's like 70% are, are breakage. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Huge. They have breakage. you buy five when they know you're going to use 1.5. Yeah. So they'll push people into a. So for example, uh, one gig might be 30 bucks and five gigs is 50. Well, everyone's going to take the five gigs for 50 because of the way they price it, hmm. they're only using a gig, gig and a half uh, on, uh, for the heavier users. And they, so and they do words. that like scientifically. Like they figure out metrically exactly how to optimize to screw us, the consumers. Uh, no question. Because we have no choice. Yep, exactly. Until now. So you guys look at this and you say opportunity? We say huge market, massive margins, a couple players owning it, right for disruption. Okay, so how are you disrupting it? Explain to me. So basically what we're doing, we're, the future's in data and 4G data. Of course. So we get high-speed internet, and we're basically saying, you know what, we're going to take the web-proven freemium model mm -hmm. that Skype did with voice, Dropbox does with storage, Vista print with office, with, uh, office supplies even. Ah. It's all over the place, and apply it to data. And we're giving away a half a gig of data free every month. A anybody who wants it. What? Half a gig data free. Uh, 4G but how data. do I get it? So here's uh, you basically go to freedompop.com. Okay. And we've got multiple devices you can choose from. Okay. So... For example, I have that up here on the screen here. If you That's want the, a, a basic device, we have a hotspot that fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, it's literally probably uh, three inches by two inches. Tiny little hotspot, and that thing you can connect up to eight devices uh, anywhere and get free 4G, whether it be your tablet, your iPad, your laptop, your wow. phone, whatever you want. <clears throat> and then we have more. So it's like a MiFi. We would say, like, I would know it as a MiFi from Verizon, yeah. similar to that? It's like that, uh, much smaller, but yeah. Yeah, I have it, actually. I bought it. Now, do you buy that? You, you buy that. How much does that cost? So, so actually, on the, on the MiFi, we actually don't require you to buy it. You can put down a deposit because we're okay. trying to remove friction. So we're saying, you know what, we'll give you the device. You've got to put down a deposit. We're a startup. We can't be giving funding people with $100 devices. Right. You put down a deposit, and it's refundable. If you don't like it, you're done with the service, whatever the case may be, you get your deposit back. Huh. Uh, and what does that cost? $99. So it's cheap. And you can get 500 for free. 500 for free for the rest of your life, per month. That's incredible. And so if I was just like a traveler or some kid in college, I could get this, just use it when I need to, 500 megabyte, check no. my email. No brain for a traveler. I mean, you go into the airport, you're That's paying why I Wi -Fi. got it. I was like, well, screw it, 100 bucks, I'll keep this as a backup, you know, and then I, uh, yeah. So here is the plan. Casual two gig plan, seventeen ninety nine a month, four gig, $28 a month. That in relation to what the, the, the oligopoly, is that how you say it, oligopoly? Nailed it. Um, is what? You're basically half their price? Yeah, anywhere between 30 and 50% cheaper. And 30 by the way, and 50% cheaper. That's not, those wow. guys price on a two-year contract with a $35. And yours activation. is? Ours is just month to month. You can cancel it. You sign up this month, cancel next month. Now, what network are you using? That's the question I have. Because like, what, what network am I actually on? Is Freedom Pop built a huge network? Are you part of this other person's network? That's like, uh, there's some other company, I think? Yeah, so we, we got a couple wholesale partners. Ah. So Clearwire is the one that we're, we're in beta right now. Right. We launched a couple of months ago on Clearwire's uh, WiMAX LT network. Mm. And then we're moving over to Sprint's LT network. Sprint's buying Clearwire, so it's going to be one of the same anyway. Ah. Uh, but we're going to be on Sprint's and nationwide LT network. So they the the resell on their network for a cheaper price, and you buy it in bulk? Is that the idea? That's exactly the idea. Now, 
Is the, are these networks now, when they put them together, going to be comparable to the Verizon and AT&T network? So, so yeah, I mean, Sprint right now, this, with the SoftBank yeah. acquisition, uh, which has gotten a lot of publicity, they're right. basically in the process of building out a nationwide LTE network that will rival any network in the uh, Verizon or AT&T's network nationwide by the end of this year. Wow. And so if I am some 12-year-old kid, 15-year-old kid, and I got mom or dad's 4S or 4 when they got the 5, and mom and dad don't want to pay for the plan, and I don't talk on the phone anyway. I use Snapchat, I use Voxer, I use all these things. That is the pattern, isn't it? Absolutely. I can just buy this case and pay 20 bucks a month and be done. You can, you, you can pay nothing if you don't use that much data. Right, but, but I mean, realistically, these kids, let's say they're going to use two gig. They're going to pay 18 bucks a month, use Skype, use Voxer, use Snapchat, whatever it is, iMessage. Does well, it require texting? I'll tell you what, we, we just did a deal, or you know, it's not yep. uh, commercially live yet, but we've right. done a deal with a local based company called Text Plus. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're Sure, of course, yeah, Text Plus. Free texting and voice. So uh, you can actually get a phone number to text to. And we will actually, it'll be called Freedom Plus, powered by Text Plus. Uh -huh. And it's going to be, we're going to just, we're going to be giving all our users uh, the ability to make free phone calls and text messages via this app as well. If wow. You, or, or you can use Skype or your favorite other VoIP app, but we'll, we'll offer that via Text Plus. And this must terrify. The AT and T horizons of the world. No, I think I think so. I mean, I, well, actually, I know so. Yeah. I mean, on one hand, they're looking at us like, wow, new business model. There could be some opportunity there. On the other hand, it could completely destroy the. Oh hell no! The they're looking they at it that way. They're not looking at it. You saying I'm going to cut 30, 50 percent of the margin out. That means less bonuses for the guys up top. These guys are going to try to kill you. Are they not? Uh, probably. Have they started? Have well, let's put it this way: they don't like us. Uh, to your point. Right. Um. No, they detest you. I can tell that. Yeah. But at the same time, the their their alternative is to lower their prices and start cutting their own margin, which is what we want them to eventually do. Right. But they're not. You know. So. It, How much you make after you? If you if you can give away this eighteen dollar thing, are you making? And what kind of margin do you have? Do you have a decent enough margin so that this business keeps going? Yeah. And so we actually approach it differently. Right? We're coming at it from a perspective of listen, if we can get fifteen percent margins or ten percent margins, that's plenty for us. This, and we're coming to an industry where they're getting seven, eight, ten times those margins. We don't. We're not greedy. We just want fifteen, uh, you know, fifteen percent margins, which is pretty thin margins, but pretty normal um, for a business. And, and you so think you can scale that because you don't have to do a bunch of customer support? Like you're not going to have store infrastructure. You're not going to do a big ad campaign on the Super Bowl. Is that the right. idea? Well, there's a, cu a couple things. One, our customer acquisition. So Verizon, for example, pays anywhere between 175 to 250 for each new customer. Right now, our customer with television ads, with ads, with online, whatever it may be. Right. Subsidized devices. Uh, our customer acquisition cost right now is zero. Uh, it's Why? all word of mouth. Oh, it's all organic. So, so on one hand, we're, we're picking up users much cheaper than the big guys. Got it. Uh, and on the other hand, we're set up like a web company. We call ourselves a webco. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if you looked at us on paper, we don't own any network. We don't own any. We outsource customer service. Right. We're a web company on paper. Very low cost base, very low sort of uh, fixed costs at all. So everything kind of is variable for us. And we can kind of scale in a, in a variable way. Let me ask you a question. Is it possible that you could make enough money let's say $1.50 a month, which is what $18 equals a year, if my math is correct, through some other method than people paying you cash? So, well, so you're two steps ahead already. So there's two other, we have value-added services, which is cash. So for example, you can get a speed boost, faster speeds for a few bucks a month and that kind of thing. Okay. And we also have something where we actually want to allow people to earn more free. And mm. what we've done is we've partnered with many companies, 30, 40 different offers where people can go in there, for example, and sign up for Netflix, and we'll give them a gig and, you know, a gig and a half free, ah. and we get paid. Or people can add friends. The other thing is people can add friends, and if you get 10, you know, each friend, you get 10 megabits free per month, forever. So, oh, the Dropbox model. The Dropbox model, but it's not a one-time hit. It's, you can do it forever. Well, the Dropbox is forever, too. Yeah, they give that 50, whatever you get, like you get another 500 meg yeah, you get at its lifetime. Yeah, you get extra storage. Yeah, get extra storage for life. The key difference on, uh, with us is you actually have this friend list, and you can, you can continue to share and uh, request ah. So let's say you and I are friends on Freedom Pop. Mm -hmm. You're not going to use your 500 free this month. Oh, you, no. You can give me some. Oh, hell no. You, you can, can move it back and forth like a commodity? Move. Correct. Oh, that's so genius. Who the hell are you come up with this crazy idea? Is this your idea? It's, it's collective. It's a team. Yeah. I mean, what's your background that you came up with this crazy-ass disruptive idea? Because this seems to me like one of those ideas that's just too hard to execute on. So when, back, did you, when did you come up with this idea? Background's actually new, because if you go back, say, seven or eight years, I was right. actually in London working for British Telecom, a huge telco. Uh -huh. And my job there, I was, I was in charge of all the innovation there. So any, uh -huh. anything that was not sort of fixed line or broadband there, 
was under my domain. Innovation. And I was basically trying to disrupt the company I was working for. Right. Oh, that so, must have won you a lot of friends. <laughs> well, that eventually left the web company. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, you're going to crush all of our bonuses. <laughs> oh, really? Compress the margins and we all get two less weeks vacation a year. Fantastic. Well, probably why it didn't work out long term yeah. there. But I left, I left BT to start my own web. So I, I got a lot of telco experience and I was very dialed into sort of what the threats would be to a telco. Right. And are they, let's just go back, without <coughs> revealing inside information or whatever, is your perception having been on the inside that they're actively trying to stifle innovations like this? Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. So, uh, t telco knows, for example, that, take that, the example I gave you, Telco knows that their most profitable users are the users who sign up for the five gigs and don't use very much. Right. They don't like, in, a, in the home game, they don't like users like you and I who probably are streaming a lot of video and Netflix, sure. et cetera. Sure, sure. Because there's no margin. They're like the guy who is like my mom or my mm. dad mm -hmm. uh, who uses maybe three or four, five, six gigs a month at home but is paying for unlimited 50 bucks a month. So right. telcos know what their sweet spots are and they right. basically try to push people into the five gig and incentivize to maximize their. Right. It's like a waiter who when you're like, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm at this like family style place and they're like, you start ordering and they're like, oh no, you're really going to need a couple more dishes. And then you get to the end of the meal and you're like, we didn't even touch the chicken parm. You know, and you're like, what? Like the good waiter tells you like, you've ordered a little bit too much. You might want to go back one dish and see if you're still hungry. But they're like these waiters who are like, oh, yeah, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. You've got to right. get the steak au poivre. And all of a sudden you're sitting there with like five more dishes than you had to order. Yeah, exactly. And you're paying the 15, 20% tip on top of that to the waiter. Right, then so. you're giving the waiter this great tip for giving you bad advice. Right. All right, so when we get back, I want to hear about, I'm going to do a little commercial in a minute, but I want to hear about um, what it's going to take for this to become like a sustainable trend and how many people are using it now and, you know, exactly, you know, if this is going to go from being this crazy idea to actually a mainstream phenomenon when we go, and how you're going to do that when we get back. You know, I just want to tell everybody, my friends over at Citrix, and, you know, they've been great friends of mine. Uh, because they make a great product, GoToMeeting, that I use literally. I just got off a GoToMeeting. I use it every day. I was uh, <clears throat> doing a little PR. Yeah, I like to, I like to use GoToMeeting because the PR person like, sets up the call, and now we're with a journalist, and sometimes I just want to riff and pull something up on my GoToMeeting. So I'm always on GoToMeeting 10 times a week, and Citrix makes that wonderful product. And they were like, hey, Jason, we have this new product. We, can we show it to you? I said, what is it? And they said, oh, it's, it, it's a share file. And I said, okay, what is that? And I, immediately I was like, oh, well, wait a second. It's just sharing files? No. This is like industrial strength, super uber powerful uh, share, uh, for sharing files. You can send files of any size, uh, up to 10 gig, just huge files. Access files from any computer or mobile device. It's safe and secure. It's built for business. This is the industrial strength file sharing system. And we use it here because you can request files. This is an incredibly amazing feature. Instead of me waiting for somebody to put something into a file sharing service, I can say to them, I'm looking for this file, send them a note, and then they get a little private place to put the file, a secret URL where they can drag and drop the file in and give it to me. They don't have to even sign up for an account. It's a very innovative uh, feature uh, by ShareFile, and, and I was really um, impressed by that. Then they also have this great feature where when we were using it, I can see if people are accessing the file, downloading it, viewing it. This is like, sort of like an audit trail, if you will. And it sends you these email alerts. Oh, this person actually got your file. Or this person looked at the file. This has been very important for me with the inside.com relaunch because I've been sending out proposals. I've been sending out like uh, pitch decks, if you will. And I want to know who's touching it and when, how often. And it was really interesting to send some, we sent the file out and I saw like, oh, it's being opened by three or four different people at the same time. Oh, they must have forwarded it. This is industrial strength file sharing uh, by Citrix. Um, you share large video clips, all this kind of great stuff. And as always, they understand that I have a very astute audience. So they said, let me get, let's get out to that this week in startups audience uh, because they know you guys are amplifiers. You'll do things like thank at ShareFile on your Twitter accounts. But go ahead and go to ShareFile.com. Click on the radio microphone button and use the promo code TWIST, T-W-I-S-T. No credit card is required. That's critical. I mean, how great is that? They know my audience. No credit card required. You can go try it. If you like it, and I know you will, you'll sign up. And uh, so go to sharefile.com and click the radio microphone button and use the promo code TWIST. And it's really interesting. Like, I can see the audit trail. This is, like, kind of interesting. I was like, oh, um, where is my, uh, there it is. I was like, what? Let me see if I can see if anybody has opened this stuff. And then, oh, this is the other thing that I really liked was, check this out. Um, they have like a folder access that's very granular. I can say, 
Um, do I want people to be able to download, upload, delete stuff, be the administrator on a very, very granular basis? And then they have this activity log, which was particularly cool. I can see like, oh, who's downloaded, who's uploaded it between these dates, et cetera. Very important in a lot of different situations uh, that you'll find yourself in business. You know the ones that I'm talking about where you want to know who's got the file, who's looked at it, and when. Really great product by Citrix. You know you can trust those folks because they make the great go-to meeting. So thanks again at Citrix for making at ShareFile. Everybody check it out. Uh, go to sharefile.com, click on the radio microphone button, and use the promo code TWIST, T-W-I-S-T. I know you're going to love it, and thanks so much for sponsoring independent media like This Week in Startups. We couldn't do it without you. Thanks to my friends at Citrix. It's a pretty good ad. You like that ad, Reed? That was pretty impressive. Right about now, you're like, if this mother effer would do that for Freedom Pop, that would be a pretty good ad, wouldn't it? <laughs> you just, weren't you just thinking that? Uh, that's, that's the upsell right there, huh? That's it. That's why I had you on the program. <coughs> this is just all a ruse. No, I had you on the program because I bought every single item you make. Because it was like, you only have like $150 in items. And I read about it, and I was so... Like, I'm spending three or $400 across my devices because I have to own every device and have to, you know, yeah. whatever. And I was like, I just got to get all of these things. Now, explain to me how you get this. How, how, let's look at this one thing here. Make, let me see this here. So this is the one that's not out yet, right? That's the one that's still under FCC approval. Okay. So this is FCC approval. Now, this is just, it looks like, uh, you know what this reminds me of is the... Um, what, what's, what's the battery case for the iPhone 4? Ba the battery charger. The battery charger. Because it's modeled after that. It is a battery charger, by the way, too. Oh, it is? Yeah. It doubles as a battery charger. Oh, so this would give me like a little 50% more life on my phone or something? Double, double the life of the phone. No. Oh, so I'm carrying that anyway. So what they call that? What's that one they call? G. Is it in case? Or is it nice? Well, there's, there's Mophie's one of the Mophie. Big I had the Mophie cases. Now, they don't have a Mophie case for the 5 yet, but I would always carry the Mophie case with my 4S. So this looks like a Mophie case, and in fact, you're saying it is. The well, battery. And I'll tell you, this makes your phone 50% heavier or something. But if you drop it, you're protected, and you have to have a case anyway, and who cares? iPhone's too light. But this is also 4G. Correct. Which means LTE, is that right? Uh, uh, well, in this case, WiMAX, but yeah. WiMAX. So explain to me the difference between when they say 4G, LTE, and WiMAX. What's the difference there? So 4G is kind of the, the faster speed. So WiMAX is uh, basically LTE is the future. Okay. That's the network evolution That stands future. for, yeah, it's a long-term evolution. Correct. Which means where we need to go to, or is that just neuro-linguistic programming? They're just getting everybody to say it's long-term evolution. So that, I, I think so. <laughs> it's, people are so evil. <laughs> so they named it like Our Great Future. That's yeah, what pretty, I'm going to start naming much. my, that's my next product. Uh, peace peace uh, to All Nations is my next product. It's a soda, but if you drink it, there'll be peace to all nations. What a neuro-linguistic... There you go. Manipulative. PT, not, yeah, we can get, come yeah. up with a nice acronym for that. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, um, LTE is this long-term evolution, and you'll get speeds of what on LTE? So on LTE, assuming the network starts getting, so networks are very unencumbered now. So you got sure. an iPhone 5. There's, I'm getting 20 megabits. Yeah, you get 20 down, but that's not going to last. As okay. more and more devices go on LTE, it's going to come down to about uh, somewhere between, I think Verizon's claiming 5 to 7, and we're, we're kind <laughs> of, we're in the same boat. What can I do in five, with 5 megabit? I can do anything. What can I do on yeah, it? I mean, that's what you're going to get DSL at home, basically. What can't you? What, what, is, this, what is something I couldn't do on f with, what takes more than five, five uh, uh, Well, no, I mean, that's, that's, megabit. that's home DSL right it's now. It's three T1s. Who cares? It's like you, you're done. I mean, the latency is the issue, right? So is there, is, is, it, five, is it five megabit, but then there's a latency issue? No, I mean, the, the speed, I mean, devices have their own, so maybe older devices are going to mm, be slower, but the, right. the reality is if you've got a iPod or an iPhone, for example, right. and you're getting 5 to 10 down. I mean, we're getting right now, by the way, on this, we're, we're getting anywhere between uh, 8 and 10 down when the signal eight strength and is strong. 8 and 10 down, which means signal, I can do video conferencing, no problem. Oh, no, you can Skype, you can, you can FaceTime on that thing anywhere you're at. So this is an iPod, you can FaceTime out in the road, wherever you want. Okay, now give me that one. This is the thing that's truly disruptive, because I know, having talked to nephews and nieces and whatnot, that they're all using the iPod Touch is a front by Apple to have a cheap iPhone, correct? Correct. They don't call it an iPhone. They claim they don't want to have a $100 iPhone, but they sell how many tens of millions of these mother effers per year? Right, and, and actually Steve Jobs, I think, when, when it did come out, he did call it the an iPhone For kids? With, without the sailor. Yeah. Oh, he did say that? Yeah. Oh, he probably retracted that afterwards. The PR people must have spit out their coffee yeah, when right. he said Karen's that. Right, probably didn't like that. 
But it is true. It's the same goddamn device as the iPhone. It's got everything the iPhone has. Is there anything it doesn't have that the iPhone has aside from carrier connectivity? The only thing it doesn't have is a, a voice network. That's it. That's it. Which but no, kids which you don't, don't anyway. use anyway. And if they did, they could use any of those other things. So now you... And this is super light because the... Correct me if I'm wrong. You just snap it off? I don't want to break anything. No, you won't. Oh, I didn't break it off. God, that's so light. And does this also provide a little battery life or no? So that does not. Okay. That that is actually designed to feel like an iPhone 3. So when you snap it on, it's... Yeah, because an an iPod Touch, let's face it, is so much less heavy than an iPhone. Right. But when you put it on here, boom, now I have... And how is it connecting? Is it Bluetooth or what? So it actually connects to the iPod via Wi-Fi. So what's cool about that device is ah. it, it's not just the, so it snaps on, it gives your iPod the cellular connection wherever you're at, and it also allows you to connect up to eight other devices. So it's a hotspot as well. What? So you got a bunch of kids on the bus, one kid's got the case, which is what we're getting. Why is everybody not going ape sugar over this? It's get, it, it, a lot of more, and if you look at All actually, right. we, we sold out. I mean, the bottom line is we, we couldn't hit the holiday demand um, because we didn't have enough devices on hand. Why would anybody with their kids buy them an iPhone when you could buy this? You shouldn't, especially get... 20 bucks a month. Well, free, actually. Oh, okay, so starting for free, but let's be honest. Kids are going to go crazy. All right. So, okay, let's call it $18 for your kids. Worst case scenario, your kids go crazy, you're spending 25 or something. You're sp- and these stupid parents are spending $100 a month plus overcharges, I'm sure, to give their kids an iPhone. Right, and they're locked into the contract and, and everything that comes with that. So for 80% less, you get all the functionality, plus it's a hotspot. Plus and because you guys are doing it based on data, you don't care that there's eight people on this, whereas they try, these bastards. They'll charge you 25 bucks a month to turn that, your, your phone into a hotspot. Uh, they're going to kill you. You realize that, right? You're going to walk out of this place, and you're going to wind up in a river somewhere. <laughs> Somebody from... You guys got bodyguards to uh, protect I'm serious, though. Out? AT&T, are they suing you? Are you being sued yet? Not being sued yet. They're going to, though, right? You expect that when you raise money from investors that they're going to try to stop you by any means necessary. I, well, that, that's probably going to be the reaction. Or, or they're going to try... Yeah, I mean, hope, hope, we're hoping the reactions they actually end up lowering prices. At the end of the day, we want to <laughs> we bring you the market down to you, check. We all know they're not going to. So let's talk about this. How many of these are out in the market, approximately? So, I, I, so this is where I can't share specific numbers and the reason because we're in uh, some funding discussions. Okay. But here's... The, we, we sold out of this device. You guys raised a lot of money already, though, right? How much uh, you guys raised in the first we've round? We've raised... Uh, in total, just under ten million. Just ten million. Under yeah. So that's it. Series A. You were able to launch it with just ten million? Like I said, we're set up like a web company. We're very lean. We're very sort of uh, you know our cost. Who's, who's, the, who's the main lead investor in this? So we, we got three VCs invested: okay. Atomico, Nicholas Zenstrom's company. Okay. Because uh, again, this is very much a uh, Skype for data. Yeah. Uh, we've got DCM, Doll Capital, uh, mm-hmm. Sandhill. Yep. And then we've got the company called Mangrove. Yep. Which, uh, so familiar with Mango. They were the first investors in Skype, and they, yep. love, they love to disrupt telco. And so they're obviously intrigued with us. Wow. So you raised 10 dimes, 10 million. Just under total. Just under 10 million. And how many people work at the company? Uh, so the company's got, now yeah, we just added a few people this week. Uh, so, for the new, so, so we're about 35 people. Where are you based? Including some customer service. Yeah. Where right here based? in West L.A. No doubt. Wow. And, and actually, I believe my co-founder's kid goes to school with your kid. Oh, really? I just got that tidbit on the way over. So. Oh, really? Let's not say it on the air because I don't want anybody uh, <laughs> trying to meet me for meetings outside my kid's preschool, which could happen. Um, so um, how do you, I mean, aside from the PR value, this, this has been available for how long? How, how long has it been? We just launched a few months ago. Like October, November? Uh, in October, yeah. And you probably have sold, I'm going to guess, tens of thousands of these. Correct. I mean, so... Um, what has the reaction been from the people who buy them? So the rea- and here's, the, here's the cool thing. So we actually have, and I'll, I'll share this, we've had hundreds of thousands of inquiries. It's a beta for us right now. Because mm-hmm. what we're also trying to do is really get the unit economics down to your point around business viability, make yeah. sure that's all nailed before we scale the hell out of it. Yeah. Um, so we basically have had hundreds of thousands of inquiries, and we're, we're only, we're, where the coverage is strongest is where we're letting people on. So we're very tight on the coverage, map. Ah, so and if so, you're not where you have great coverage by clear wire, was it? Yep. So you're basically trying to make sure that people don't get the wrong impression that this is going to work everywhere yet because yep. you, the Sprint deal isn't closed. Correct. The Sprint clear deal's wire. closed. We're, we're in the right. process of going with Sprint. But right. Clearwire is in the top 80 markets, covers about 120 million people. Perfect. And so we're, LA is fantastic, New York, all the big markets. Right. And so we're basically letting people on. And we have limited devices for the beta. And so we're letting people on in the best 
network and, and the reaction has just been overwhelmingly positive. I mean, people love it. It's like, because mm. it sounds too good to be true to a lot of people. Then they that's get the what device. I'm, I mean, and, that's what you're hearing from me here in this talk is how, how, how the hell is this possible? But this Clearwire company seems fascinating. Tell me about that, because it seems like if they didn't build their network, they've built a network just to do wholesale. So Clearwire's got a retail division as well. What's it called? Uh, Clear. Oh, I've never even heard of it. But they're, they're actually, I think, uh, and what are they selling? IP's top five. They sell uh, home, primarily home broadband, ah. which we're moving into as well. So you'll be able to get you get a clear a home wireless, it's still backhaul 4G. Mm -hmm. I think the price is like 35 bucks a month for unlimited. So you could have a wireless at home in a place where you can't get DSL. Correct. Or where you can get it. It's fa as fast, if not faster, than DSL. Really? So, so you get a router? It's just a router. You plug in. There's no truck rolls or anything along those lines. Interesting. But they're also... Strategically, they're they're very focused on wholesale, and Sprint is one of their biggest wholesale partners, and that's the bulk of the the real revenue comes from. Right. And so th these guys are a wholesale based company, and they look at they don't look at retail as like we want to protect the retail stream. They look right. at it like we could care less about retail. We're about building wholesale revenues, and here's this innovative new business model, and they want to enable it. Right. So in a way, they if they hadn't built out that network, there's no way you can exist because AT and T or Verizon would never let you do what you're doing. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the reason, so you're familiar with a company called Light Squared? Do you remember Light Squared? I do. They had problems with the... Explain get, it to me. So Light Squared was what this uh, f new 4G network being mm. built out by Falcon, big uh, investor, yep. and then it got shut down by the FCC and a lot of political lobbyists, probably funded by AT&T and Verizon as well. He was building out this big network about a year ago, mm -hmm. and it got shut down because of regulatory reasons. But what he basically set the tone for was he was going to be wholesale only mm. and try to enable, enable innovation. Uh, he came along, though he got shut down, he actually sh sort of shot a, a warning signal to the industry, and Clearwire basically said, we're going to fill the void that Light Squared was going to try to fill. Ah. We're going to focus on that. And so Clearwire kind of changed their path a little bit, and they sort of freed up from Sprint a bit and started to uh, reach out. And so in a way, it's inevitable that somebody will come in and offer a wholesale wireless data. And is there another one that's going to come? Like so the cool thing is Sprint, which is the... Kind of the third, you, know, you got 18 team Verizon between the two of them. I think it's like 85 percent market share. Right. So you got Sprint, which has much less to lose on the retail side. They're the stray dog. They're the, they're the wild card. And so they're far more committed to wholesale. So and Masayoshi-san bought them. Exactly, and he's and he's a gangster, <laughs> in the best sense of the word. I had Absolutely. lunch with him twice when I was in Japan last time, and he is a brilliant man. People don't know SoftBank brought the iPhone to uh, Japan, and when they said it would never work, and now it's crushing it, and. He was the richest man in Asia for a period of time. Yeah, still probably uh, up there. And uh, he's still up there, but he's also just a genius. Like, I, you know when you vibe with somebody? You ever met him? I haven't met him in person. Like, there's some people, like, when I sit with Cuban or Elon Musk, and you start talking, and you're just like, boom, 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 like riffing and talking about stuff. Like, I, I spent like three hours over a lunch just talking with him with like 20 other executives in the room, and they were all just sitting there like watching us talk like, wow, what are those guys talking about? We're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Anyway, he's a brilliant guy, but he's now said, I'm going to buy Sprint. Right. And he bought it. Right. And he wants to what? Do what with it? So, well, he wants to actually, he's got the same objective as us, which is sort of dent this oligopoly. And which, that's why having Sprint is our wholesale partner. So you got Clearwire, mm. but then that we also did this deal with Sprint. So we've actually got two networks now. Huh. Um, and so we actually have, we'll have full broad coverage. We've got SoftBank buying Sprint, which is going to completely, you know, that, that emboldens us even further. So you'll have access to Sprint network. You have the Clearwire becomes Sprint. Uh, or the wholesale unit, and are, is it, you think there'll be another? What was the other company that you, that shut down? Uh, the FCC shut down. Uh, what's the Light Squared? Light Squared. Do you think there'll be like more of these, like Light Squared's popping uh, up, or is it just too expensive to build a network? So the reality is, Light Squared's still fighting their battle. Maybe they make it, maybe they don't. Uh, but I think it's too expensive. The networks are billions of dollars, and so mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you'll probably see the out. You, and so we are, by the way, talking to other carriers. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got Timo, obviously, is the other one. T-Mobile's the other one who's like a wild card. Right. They're, they, they're up against it. Right. And even AT&T and Verizon wholesale, they, wholesale divisions look at it. Now, the reality is because of the channel conflict, it's probably never going to happen. But they look at us and say, we'd love to have that wholesale revenue coming through us. Hmm. So why hasn't Wi-Fi taken off in a big way? You see Boing Boing, which I have a Boing Boing account. That's a great company. And they've got 500,000 hotspots or something like that. Are you able to buy into their network and offload some amount of traffic to it? And Yeah, so like Boingo, for example, um, the LA base as well. Yeah. Uh, the so theoretically, yes, but the reality is when we look at sort of what we're doing, mm. you don't need, I mean, you go to LAX, you just pop this thing on, you're getting free, you don't need to sign up for, for Team for Boingo, I think those, yeah, or, or yeah. Team, I, whoever's in LAX, it's not yeah. Boingo, but the other, uh, I forgot the name of the company that does LAX, but you yeah. got, 
you really don't need it. So we right. see ourselves as you're getting speeds, by the way, um, like Starbucks, for example. Their, their, their speeds are only one and a half down. You're actually getting like four or five Sorry, times faster Sorry, you're... <laughs> All right, look at that. Now, should I take this call for you? No, don't take that call. But you're vibrating here, so it's obviously working that you're going through Freedom Pop. Um, and so how, how do you get something like this to explode and, and become a phenomenon, do you think? I, th I think we're on the path already. I oh. mean, if you look at it, so... The cost does it. Yeah, you get the, you got a compelling pro. And by the way, one of the key things we lit from the gate, uh, we wanted to, we had to have a compelling proposition. Yeah. So the whole time we were saying, can we make a half, a half a gig minimum needs to be there. That's enough for people to actually get real value. Can we make it work? And the question was, can we make a half a gig work? Yeah, we can make 100 megs work, but nobody gives a, yeah. about, I don't want to put money in the, the, yeah. the jar there. But nobody no, gives you do a, want to put money in the jar. <laughs> maybe we'll donate afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the reality is, it's easy to make 100 megs work or something like that, yeah. but we needed to make it compelling. We made it compelling enough where people talk about it, people want yeah, it. Yeah, 500 meg is just ridiculous, because yeah. that means I could do what, like a couple of days of work for free on the no, network? No, the reality is 70% of Americans use under 500 megs on their smartphone. That's so, so disruptive, dude. And what does that cost? What is what? What is what are your wholesale prices like? Um, I can't can't I, I, can't say exactly. I can't say exactly, but it's. But what are wholesale prices like? If AT and T was selling a wholesale uh, five gig, what would they sell that whole? Well, for? AT and T is going to be expensive. Okay, I'm just curious. But so what do you think it would be? AT and T is probably going to well, AT and T probably between twenty five twenty bucks twenty five bucks a gig. Oh wow. Um, now they got retail running the shops in those in those companies. Yeah. Now the reality is we got significantly better deals because Clearwire is obviously aggressive yeah. in wholesale and even Sprint very much aggressive in wholesale. So and b by the way, both those companies buy into what we're doing, so they're willing to work with us and give us great deals as well. Is this why the Kindle Whisper Net? Like, how does that work? You know, they have that like network where you buy a Kindle and it's always got connectivity, right? Yep. It's like built into the price. So of the Amazon's device. basically covering some wholesale cost on that. And who do you think they're buying it from? With majors um, or you know, not sure. I'm not sure. I think they're buying. I think they have multiple network providers. So are we going to be living in a future eventually where you can buy devices and have limited, you know, amounts of data coverage in them just as part of the acquisition price of the device, do you think? I think, I mean, the way we look at it, actually, if you, if you project, say, 12, 24 months out, yeah. we're actually going, from, from our perspective, right now we have devices that enable sort of free internet on mm -hmm. top of the devices you use. Mm sleeve for the iPod. We're actually going down a path where we think longer term, two years, we'll actually sell core devices that come with the free internet in them. Or we'll have a uh, SIM chip, for example, that you just pop into your iPhone. So you could it. actually get one of these Taiwanese manufacturers to give you an MP3 player that had a 4G, that was an Android device, and Freedom Pop could have their own devices. Correct. We could have an own or, 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 we could a actually, tablet. We could, if you've got a, uh, a device that's already on, let's say you've got an Android that you don't use anymore, hmm. pop in a Freedom, Freedom Pop SIM chip, Boom. And you're good to go. Holy cow, that is so mind-blowing. So people could be like going on vacation, bring an extra freedom, take their old Android phone with them, throw an and put a freedom pop in there. If they don't have good coverage or they need extra coverage, they got an extra backup device or whatever. Is it ever going to get to the point where you think internet will be available everywhere for free and you'll just be playing for some like high speed in a way? Like free, low speed is going to be the norm? That, that's what we're hoping for. I mean, yeah. I, th I think so, because we're going to help enable it and bring that there. Now, the current market may not like that, but that's where things are going to head. Why isn't Google giving you $50 million to just go out there and do this? Good question. Maybe we should talk to Google after the uh, our conversation. But no, but I mean, it makes total sense, right? Like, they just want more usage. Or Facebook, for, for example. Like, if, if Facebook really wanted to do something disruptive, I mean, this nonsensical... Like search engine of your friend's preferences is important. It's just that's that's not important. Nobody's going to care about that. Nobody will talk about that product ten years from now. But if they wanted to do a product that mattered, a Freedom Pop Facebook tablet or phone or smart device that had free unlimited usage of Facebook, so you get the device and it's free to use Facebook a hundred percent of the time, and then five hundred megabytes, sort of like when you go on um, Southwest, you can look at the sites that are paying them. I guess like. Certain things are free, like the Southwest site is right. free. Wow, there's, there's a good time. But, the, you know, they're like make US Today Today free, right? Like, so the New York Times could come out with a tablet that you could open up anywhere and get the, if you're a subscriber to the New York Times, get New York Times forever. Or, or the New Yorker could come out with a New Yorker tablet that was $150 that was just designed for the New Yorker that had New Yorker buttons on it. You know, you could, I mean, are we going to get to that point? I think that's actually pretty good ideas, and we may get to that point, or we may get to a point even one sort of step further, which is you take an Android tablet maker, pick yours, battling against uh, the iPad or iPod, mm. um, and think of, let's let's call it uh, HTC for lack, because that's sure. one that's not a huge player now. Yeah. 
What if they came out with a tablet that said, you know, free half a gig and free internet? This tablet comes with free internet. Any site you want, half a gig a month, powered by Freedom Pop. And um, they know that one out of five will upgrade, and that's enough to pay for the other 2.5 gig. Exactly. Or two, two gig. Yeah. And all uh, we know, so if it was powered by Freedom, we actually know, because we're web people at the end of the day, uh, yeah. on a web company. And so we work on, we understand email, we understand trying up, so we understand, like, the intelligence behind you. Listen, you've used half your free data and your 14 days in your billing, you know, your period. Yeah. Then we'll send you an email that says, hey, you're, you're on pace to go over. So we have algorithms to try to get people. So we have all the intelligence there. Uh, and we're very good at getting people. So part of the beta is we've actually, and I've, I'll share this number with you. We're, yeah. We've gone, so when we launched three months ago, we had about 5% of people who were either, who were paying us any kind of money. Yeah, converting. Converting. Um, today, three months later, it's just been three months, we've got close to 30%. So we're How did I miss this investment opportunity? I'm mean, just dying over here. You boost raised me ten million. It's probably at a fifty million dollar valuation. I put in fifty thousand dollars. I mean, I, I it would. It's good is, math. It's un effing believable. I'd be up like the next round is going to be like three hundred, four hundred million dollar round. I would be up like eight times my money. I would have turned fifty dimes into three hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's like two, three Tesla Model S's. I'm killing myself. Uh, the math works myself. out like that. I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, uh, it's actually. I just think in terms of how many Model S's I would get. I think I'd be up like three Model S's right now on the original investment. It's killing me. Imagine uh, the garage there. I know. I'm going to need a bigger boat. I'm going to need a bigger garage. Um, and so you guys are going to get a zillion buyout offers. I mean, this is just so disruptive. Do you, are you going to sell or is this like a religious thing for you guys that you want to go big and, and get to... What is success? I mean, let's put it that way. Like, is success for you guys flipping this company for a billion dollars, or is it getting to 50 million subscribers? What is success? Yeah, it's, more, it's more the latter. I mean, we started this thing. We wanted to proliferate free internet, mm. and we wanted to make sure that everybody's got access to free internet as just sort of a basic principle. We actually have a tagline, internet's a right, not a privilege. Love that. The company believes that. It. It's yeah. a right. And so basically we enable a business model to support that that, that mission, and it's so versus a not-for-profit or something like that. We actually enable a real business to support that mission. Mm. Uh, but ultimately, we want to make sure that everybody's got access to free internet. Hmm. And by the way, one of the side effects with that should be cheaper internet for everybody because we right. should drive the market down to more tolerable levels versus the get consumers getting pillaged. Could a college give away or some school like give away? How much? I mean, what's the cost? I'm trying to estimate. You're, what do you sell the um, iPod Touch case for? What does that go for? 99 bucks. 99 bucks. So is there a little margin there for you or no? There's a little bit of margin. A little bit of margin. So it could cost a little bit less. So a school could actually buy these and just give them out to everybody for free. And are you going to get to the point where the hardware will be so cheap that you could give the hardware away for 10 bucks or free? That's the hope. Yep. How far away do you think you are? Is that a so year? So the, ti the timelines we look at, we, we operate on sort of, uh, the way we look at our business, we operate on a three-year timeline. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as devices getting to the point where there's very little friction, cost friction, we're, we're thinking 12 to 18 months. Wow. So the price of hardware is plummeting, and your scale is such that at some point the price of the hardware is going to drop to nominal. Correct. And by the way, you start to get refurbished hardware coming into the inventory. Ah, so, yes, yes, yes. So for example, if we actually, when we move up, so we, we could get uh, the USB dongles, for example. Mm -hmm, sure. Um, Sprint has 3G, 4G USB dongles. Right. And the reality is people aren't even, you know, with tablet proliferation, et cetera, nobody really wants a, a USB dongle for a laptop as much as they used to. Right. So you can buy those for sub 10 bucks now. Wow. And probably three or four bucks in a couple of months, you know, in the next six months. So they could just be like a basket, you know, in the library of these things and just come up and grab one. Yeah, like absolutely. sort of like Square does. Square gives the hardware. I think from what I understand, that little reader, they're just like the reader costs five bucks. Just take one. Yeah. And they just send it to you hoping that it's like a tool to get you to activate. Right. Eventually, they'll activate at some point and it will work out. Yeah. So when you talk refurbished dongles, for example, same model. It's like less than five bucks to get one of these things. You could just give them out. So disruptive. When did you know that this was going to work? Because uh, it, it seems like just a couple of years ago, this, there's no way this would have worked. Right? I mean... Uh, no. It was for the, like, even like uh, 18, 20, 18 months ago. 24 months ago, actually. There was just no way because you, you modeled have, it? Yeah. It, 4G wasn't there. So the reality is 4G wasn't there. Okay. So you're looking at 3G networks, which are over-congested, super expensive, like chucking 25, 30 bucks a gig kills the yeah. model. Um, so it, that wouldn't have worked two years ago. Because there was so much scarcity in 
data networks. And, and the 3G pricing is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And so really in the last, uh, it was call it a year, year and a half ago with Light Squared coming out and the wholesale market shifting and 4G being built out, it sort of started to enable a model like this. Right. Now I didn't, didn't, really, you know, didn't know it was going to work until about two months ago when we launched the thing. And we started to see that we can actually, the, there's a viable business underneath the What was your concern? Well, what, what did you think would make it not work? That consumers would think it was too complicated? Well, the biggest concern was, are we going to get killed from a cash perspective? Because mm -hmm. there is a certain type of user we lose money on. Like any freemium model, we're losing money on a certain user. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality is, you know, users who well, they love the service and those who are going to use more are willing to pay for more. It's, it's very cheap prices. And so that's what we wanted to see, and we're seeing it. Do you have users abusing the system by buying three units and then rotating them every month and doing 1.5 gig for $300 and doing the math to try to, like, hack it? We, we, we have some abuse. Um, that would be the abuse, right? Like, buy yeah. three units and know that in month 15 it's, like, better to steal the unit than pay? Yeah, right. So It's so stupid. Who, I mean, who goes to that length to buy three well, devices? Fortunately, there's, there's some people doing it, but not enough where it's a big issue for us. If right. it is, we can start cracking down on it. And we, have, we allow users to add friends. Uh, and earn more free. Mm -hmm. So for each friend you have, more. so we yeah. have users who, who are abusing that a bit, but right now we're kind of, we're fine with it. It's not major abuse, it doesn't hurt as much. Yeah, and you know what I find is the abusers become your biggest fans, and at some point the abuse is like, they get tired of gaming the system because there's so much work to game the system and create all those free Yahoo accounts to create the second accounts for their friends that it, it's like, ah, oh, this is just, exactly. it's too much. Like It's like burning Blu-ray DVDs, right? Like I thought, oh, I'll just, get a Netflix account and I'll burn the DVDs onto my laptop and I'll return them, I'll be able to get a bunch of movies. And then I opened up a Blu-ray disc and I was like, oh, I'll just try to burn this so I can watch it on my laptop because I don't have a Blu-ray player on my laptop. I was like, it's going to take like eight days to burn a Blu-ray. Like, it's just built into it that it's too much work. Yeah. I'd rather just pay for the iTunes Blu-ray. That's exactly, the rates are so cheap here. It's like, it's, yeah. It's like, just pay for, I mean, yeah. I think that's exactly Excuse the point. Excuse the guitar there, guys. I knocked down my ukulele. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so now, how confident were you pre-launch that this would work? You're 50-50? Were you 60-40? It's one of those things where you're confident going in. Confident. I mean, right. Pretty confident going in, but okay. at the same time, there's that uncertainty. 80%. Yeah. And where are you now? Now the confidence level is a lot higher. I mean, yeah. it's 90%. You know 90%. this is going to work. Yeah, 90%. Yeah, we, we're nailing, you know, as far as the business model, it's being validated. We're actually making solid improvements con continually. Yeah. I think we can get even further. Uh, so now it's more about, like, let's get ready to ramp the heck out of the thing and, and, and really take over. Now, internationally, it'd be very hard for you to go to India or China or Europe with this model because there's ho there aren't wholesalers or the markets are a little bit, or even more, I don't want to use the word corrupt, but even in Europe it's not, but in I would assume in India and China, they would just not let you do this. Well, ch China actually just last week announced that they are going to, the government said that uh, they're, they're opening up for MVNOs, which okay. is wholesale part. So China's a viable market for MVNO us. for the audience stands for? What does uh, it stand for? Mobile virtual network operator. Right. It's basically a, somebody who's buying wholesale and reselling. Like Virgin did or like Helio, Virgin did. Sky's company, right? Yeah. We consider ourselves more of an ISP, internet service provider, sure. than an MVNO. Because you're doing the, data. Right. But so China just opened up. You've got co countries like Brazil that are actually opening up for that as well. Europe's mm -hmm. already open for that. So, so there is an international expansion to the extent that we can find network partners in those markets. And between you and I and your audience, we're actually having some discussions with some of those as well. Yeah. Why hasn't the shared... Um, Wi-Fi phenomenon taken off. This idea that you could share your Wi-Fi network. I got a login. Obviously, the company in Spain that Google invested in. Um, and SoftBank, Fawn. Fawn. And me at BT, by the way. Which was the other one? Uh, well, Fawn is the company that, uh -huh. that you're uh, the Spanish. F O N. Yeah. Yeah. What did you say? You invested in it? Uh, I said BT. While well, I was at BT. Oh, BT, you invested in. It. BT. I, I Has Fawn taken off or not? And why not? I mean, explain what Fawn is to the audience. Yeah. So Fawn is basically. Um, an open Wi-Fi company, meaning that uh, somebody has broadband at home, mm -hmm. part of their broadband is allocated to external users, and then they use the rest. And so somebody, if I was at your house, mm -hmm. and or I, I would see outside a signal, my house or outside park. your house at a yeah, parking lot or whatever, I would see your signal, mm -hmm. and I could pay to get onto your network. Right. So that, that's Fawn's model. Mm -hmm. Now, are they taking off? They, have, they actually have a big install base, but it's not through organic consumers actually saying, I want the service. It's oh, through it's deals. Bundled? It's like BT saying, you know what, we're going to do a deal with Fawn. So uh, every router we ship to a home UK resident has that software and on so it. And so you if you're sharing your Wi-Fi on Fawn, other users can, you, you can use other people's. It's sort Correct. of like a collective or something. Correct. And Time Warner, I think, is doing that now in New York, aren't they? Like every router they send creates a Wi-Fi hotspot for other Time Warner users. Correct. So this is another way to sort of get a little extra bandwidth out there and make it a little stickier. Correct. Now, now, what's interesting is if you think in terms of the Fawn model, 
of the fawn routers mm -hmm. are residential, and there, there's no sharing going on on them because there's no people around them, unless you live in a populous area. Yeah, unless you're in an apartment building or yeah, something. Yeah, an apartment building. So what we in which case, you would be in your house. <laughs> exactly. And therefore, you'd be using your own. Right. So, so it's sort of DOA by definition. Yeah. Or not DOA, it's sort of of limited use by definition. Right. And actually, that is the, a number I've heard from within BT that, like, I think 1% of those fawn routers actually get what they call alien traffic on them. Most of them are just normal routers. Of course. Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah. But what we think is interesting, imagine open Wi-Fi on a device like this. You're at LAX. Oh, my God. Know, so that's actually, I'm just going to kind of drop that sort of nugget there now, but that's something So that's I don't have, I am a Freedom Pop, I have a Freedom Pop login. And there's 10 Freedom Pop users around me who have a free device. So if you're using the free device with 500 meg, it's automatically an open hotspot. Oh my God, is that disruptive. Or you don't have a Freedom Pop device, you're at LAX and somebody else does and you see a free internet signal coming from his device and you can log in. Oh my, my. And you can get maybe 50 free megs for your LAX and if you register or whatever the case may be. Right, that's like an incredible way to do customer acquisition. So I see a Freedom Pop open network and I can get five meg of it. Or I can get five meg or 50 meg and just for giving you my email address. Correct. Then you can upsell me on the device. If I get the device, now I'm upselling to other people. Exactly. So, genius. What about cars? Car cars is actually, so I mean, you're hitting the nail on the head with as far mm -hmm. as BMW, I think, announced that they're going to be having LT in every car. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to see car manufacturers actually include that. Right. And so as far as we're concerned, that's a huge market, and you're going to have a huge install base of cars that don't have it, and we're going to, you know, we'll have devices that are more car form specific. It's part of the p problem with the cars is like how to power them in the car. Like, there's, you have to like plug them into a cigarette lighter. It's kind of a ganky kind of experience. Um, I, th yeah, it I has think to be built that, into dash. Right, it's got it. So you think like a, it's got to plug into a cigarette lighter. Or so. so these things have oh an eight-hour battery. Oh my, there's a good idea. Had a, yeah. a cigarette lighter that was the device. So Correct. You plug it in, and then it still has the power adapter out of it. So it's a passive one, right? So it's got a male and a female. So you plug in the Freedom Pop thing, and you still don't compromise your cigarette lighter, so you can still plug in right. your car charger. Yeah, th think USB dongle, but instead of plugging into a USB, it's plugging into a cigarette lighter. And it has a USB. It still has the female plug, so you can plug in Correct. your thing. Oh, yep. my God, that is so genius. I love what you're doing, dude. It's so epic. That's what I like to hear. And, and are the how do you manage something that, is so obviously going to be a breakout success now in raising money. Is your philosophy that we're just going to raise as much money as possible? Are you looking for a strategic investor? I mean, you said you're raising money now, so um, and that won't get you in trouble anymore because of the uh, rules about it. Um, if you had your druthers, would you would you want a pure venture investor like Sequoia or Andreessen Horowitz or Social Capital Partnership, Chamath's firm, Benchmark, Bill Gurley's firm, or would you like to have a strategic like a Google? It's a good question. And the, so right now, we're actually, we're not proactively out there aggressively raising. No, but you're getting money. pinged. You're getting pinged. We're, yeah, we're getting pinged. We're having some discussions, and we'll probably get a little more aggressive uh, in three to four you're months. You're always talking. Everybody, your good founder's always talking. But to answer your question, strategic is actually kind of interesting to us. Well, um, why is strategic interesting? Because, well, to be honest with you, because at this stage, I'm not sure how much value a VC is going to bring to us. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. sorry. But, you know. That, it's true, though. Most VCs, the va you have three great ones. So how much value does the fourth bring? Right. That's and, a fair and, statement. And the company's moving along. And at this point, you look strategic. You, th you know, strategic may be able to actually bring additional value. Uh, and some, you know, in the industry, you know, in telco, partnerships are important. And mm -hmm. having companies that sort of lubricate partnership discussions also mm -hmm. helps. So, yeah, it's mm -hmm. great to have a, a VC maybe make an intro to somebody at some uh, Brazilian telco. But you yeah. know what? Qualcomm or Sprint or Google or um, some of these guys making an intro is probably more compelling. I got You know Solar over at YouTube? Yeah. This is what they should do. They should come out with a YouTube device that's got Freedom Pop on it. It's free to watch YouTube videos on that device. If you pay, it turns on Gmail, web browser, everything else. But the YouTube app is free because those mobile users are so valuable for advertising. And it, can you imagine if there was a YouTube iPod Touch, for lack of a better term, or, you know, sort of like actually I just got this. Um, I was making fun of um, James Altucher uh, for having the, the, the uh, Galaxy Note 2, which is basically the big, I mean, I could basically serve drinks on this thing. Like, I could be like, oh, I'm sorry, coffee, tea. I mean, it, it, you can fit two cups on here. It's unbelievable. Have you seen this thing? I haven't, actually. Look, if I hold my phone up to read something, you can't even see me. I mean, what door holds this to the side of your head? I mean, I feel like I'm uh, Anybody get a headset for that thing? You have to have a headset or you look like a huge douche. Um, but 
Uh, can you imagine if they can get this device down to ninety nine dollars or something like that? Which just and you and it said YouTube on the back of it, and you got all these kids hanging out, like you know, watching YouTube videos constantly, and it's free to watch YouTube videos anywhere. Oh my God, that would be incredible. I like I like the way you're thinking. It's got to be Google who does this because they're the only ones who have like real cojones in the industry to do. Or actually, you know, Bezos is kind of a madman too. Yeah, and Facebook, your, Facebook's getting up there, too. You know what the problem with Facebook is? It's all about them. Like, they would love to do what you're doing. They'll just meet with you for three... They'll do, like, three 10-hour deep dives with you, and then they'll just steal your ideas. I mean, that's all they do. Look what they did with Poke. Yeah. It's just, like, a complete photocopy ripoff. Who's the entrepreneur you respect most? Like, when you look at the entrepreneurs out there who are currently practicing, and then give me your historical one. Okay. So, let me start with historical, because that's easier. That's easy. Yeah, that's going to be... That's Nicholas. Uh, okay. Janice from Skype, because, yeah. you know... What the, what they did with Skype and voice and the telco industry, yeah. um, we're very much modeled after. Disrupted it, it is what you mean. Disrupted it, disrupted it in a big way, and and actually uh, yeah, and, and brought free voice uh, to the mainstream by uh, right. the new technology at the time ten years ago. Void. It's, it kind of is mind blowing what they did when you think about it, because these people who you know, I don't know. I was talking to somebody who was like couldn't believe that they talked to their mom in India, for free. I think it was Om Malik when he was on the show was talking about how like he just sits there and can't believe the network is so powerful and free that he can talk to his mom in India once a week for nothing essentially. Yeah, well, and now Pennies. We, now we take it for granted. We it think was it's five dollars a minute to talk to his mom. Right. Back in ten years ago, you know, ten that, years that was ago, massive. It was huge, and it was one of these things that sounded too good to be true, and now it's the norm. Well, and you know what? I'm getting shades of that. I mean, I talk about Freedom Pop. I feel like this is too goddamn good to be true. And when you talked about Skype, you're, how is this possible? How is it possible? And everybody said, oh, it's going to fail, it's going to fail, it's going to fail. And that's what they're saying about you guys. You're going to fail. There's no way you can do it. But you're doing it. We're doing it and okay. actually doing it well. So, Okay. And now who else do you respect? And I, I, I got to tell you, it's an incredibly savvy move to have your investors as your favorite. So I got to ask your second. So second. So, but I do respect the savviness of that. So before I moved to my partner, our, okay, our yeah. partner Text Plus, who I, you know, they've got shared sort of ideologies on, on disrupting uh -huh. telco as well uh -huh. on the voice side. Uh, the guy from Dropbox. Forgot his Drew name. Drew Houston. Yeah, so I've, I actually never met Drew in person, but I've he seen a few of his presentations. He launched at the first uh, launch conference at the Tech Crunch yeah. 40. Yeah. And so I think uh, guy. you look at Dropbox, great company, great product, but they also understand the value in the product. They understand sort of the whole end-to-end -end business, the mechanics around it, the, the viral piece, the customer acquisition. So it's their sort of holistic diligence knowledge of their customer and how and the whole ecosystem. That yeah, and I think the, their mentality is very much aligned with what we try to do, which is you get sort of a test before you invest mentality. They don't mm -hmm. go in there and invest millions and countless hours of their dev resources into an idea until they sort of vetted it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and I like that mentality. So He's I, a wicked smart guy. I remember meeting Drew when he pre-launch, I said they were coming out of Y Combinator and the presentation crashed a bunch of times, but the Sequoia guys were like, this is going to be big, we think. And I just looked at it, and I was like, there was a big sign above Drew's head that just said, like, winner, winner. It was like a neon sign. Like, this person's going to win huge. And then for him to turn down Steve Jobs, according to reports, I mean, can you imagine, like, Steve Jobs comes to you and, like, Steve Jobs comes to you and offers to buy a company. I don't know that I'm big enough to be like, no, Steve. Yeah, that's a tough one to turn down. Yeah, I, I don't know honest, that I'd have the balls do to do that. Yeah. You don't have the balls to do it, clearly. I don't either. But Drew has cojones the size of, like, basketballs or something. I don't know what that guy has got, but he said no to Steve Jobs, who was suffering with mobile me. What a disaster. When right. Steve Jobs comes to you to solve your problem, you are a baller. Yeah. Think Steve. about that. Like, Steve failed. Not that Steve failed. This team failed him. And then he goes to Drew Houston and says, solve my biggest problem, which yeah. is the cloud. Huge. Uh, he, yeah, like, and Drew says no. You have me at hello kind of thing, Steve, but it would be like he knocks on the door, deal's done. <laughs> God Almighty! Um, so you're sold out now. Is there anything that people can buy? Or yeah. So we, we actually we were sold out. We just got new ones. So we actually have uh, our iPod cases, new shipment in now, selling those. Okay. Now. We, we've got the uh, the what we call the Photon, which is the MiFi. Yeah. The it's palm tiny. It's like the size of an Oreo. Yeah. That's a couple two Oreos maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's a double stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and then we also have the uh, the dongles. Uh, which you can buy now, and then, and by the way, here's another. dongles week. <laughs> I don't like the dongle. We have a lot of dongles. That's the I one know, device we didn't cheap. sell out of. Uh, well, are they're you cheap and nobody wants them. Uh, yeah, dongle looks bad. It makes you, you know what, the dongle dates you. It, it does. makes you look old. It's like now, what about this iPhone case? Phone. When is the FCC going to approve that? Hopefully, any time. So we're, we're basically. What, is, what does the FCC have to approve? It's a here, case. Here's what I don't get. Or here's what's frustrating me about the FCC yeah. is you've got basically this. No problems with it. This right. is the case. Now what they want us to do, or you know, our uh, equipment yeah. manufacturers, to actually start playing with the iPhone. 
and what? disabling antennas in the iPhone, which has nothing to do with the case, but they want to test what happens with the case when the iPhone antennas are broken or things that are just complete independent of a case. Oh, red tape. Red tape. Oh, red tape. You say that with a level of slight perturbedness, which might indicate that you think that there might be something at play. Do you think that the FCC is on your side? Well, Do you I think said, they're against you? Boy, that's a, that's a loaded question because I want the approval to go through pretty damn quick. Exactly. Um, but let's just say a healthy amount of suspicion would not be unwarranted. Let's, let's put it this way. The, the rigor and, and the types of tests that are running us through are, are somewhat irrational. It, really? It, it, they, they, they have nothing. Yeah, so there is a bit of skepticism. Who runs that? Julius Jankowski? Or is that the FTC? What is that's, that? It's uh, the chairman. No, the chairman is... Um, and I don't think they're out to get us, by the way, because no, we I actually... No, I don't think so. The, the FCC yeah, chairman... That's Julius Jankowski. Julius, I know right. him. He's a great guy. Yeah, he wants. He has a shared objective. As well. He wants to bridge the digital divide. Yeah, so no, I this guy, I'm telling you some Julius problem. Jankowski, I'm going to get him on the program. He's fantastic. That guy has been pushing so much stuff through and getting so much stuff lit up. I mean, he's, I don't know, I've been, I'm a big fan. He just got the, um, high, the, the, the really high-powered Wi-Fi through. Because um, that was something that people were yep. trying to stop. He, he's been he's been a good FCC chairman. I yeah, like yeah. Him. I mean, he, he's got the at the high level. The FCC's got shared objectives with what we're trying to do. So I don't yes. think it's like at some time. No, they're trying to but, bridge the digital divide. I mean, that's like yeah. the new FCC is like let's bridge a exactly. digital divide. Like who cares about Janet Jackson's nipple or Howard Stern's, you know, Bob right. Louis or whatever? It's not like his concern. Um, and when you talk about passing that five dollar dongles in schools and that type of thing which we'd like to get to very much strongly aligned with with julius here yeah julius really wants to uh from what i've talked to him about it he really wants to um bridge that digital divide and, and get broadband in america my god we're so far behind do you think we'll ever get the the fiber stuff done or it has to be done mobily honestly uh, I, to be honest i think the uh it's it's probably going to end up, the future's mobile, because mo the mobile devices are going to win out in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, and I oh, because the usage will be on devices. Exactly. Therefore, the solution has to be wireless. That's what I'm getting at. That's really smart. I never thought about that. I wish fiber was available. I mean, I, people would pay an unlimited amount to have fiber. We're not investing in this country. It's like up yeah. to guys like you. Like, you got to have these, like, pirates come in and be like, Arr, we're going we're gonna to screw things up, and we're going to really, sh you know, shake things up. But... My God, why can't we get it together as a country? It just, our government is so dysfunctional. Yeah, first, first we got to make sure we don't default on our debt. Oh, I mean, really, like, our country should literally give you guys $10 billion and give one of these to every citizen. I wouldn't mind that, actually. That would be such a great idea. No, not forget about every citizen. We, got, we have 70 million kids or something like that. Give every kid a Freedom Pop, you know, router or something like that, and let them put it on their bias over there. And then every, or actually... Any kid who's on food stamps, here's, a, here's an idea. Here's an idea that nobody could argue with. And I would pay taxes. I would increase my taxes. And I pay a lot of taxes, let me tell you. I would increase my taxes in order to pay that every child on food stamps gets a tablet right now. I'd buy that. With Freedom Pop on it. Even better. I do without Because at Pop. least it gives them a fighting chance to get some more information and get a skill. Yeah. Well, see, any, any uh, kid who's not on food, food stamps, like... Every sort of yuppie or middle class parent's gonna have an iPhone, so all those kids are getting the. Oh, they already exposure. have it. The digital divide gets wider. Exactly. It it's actually so obnoxious it. to see these rich kids in schools who. I mean, I'm on vacation and listen. I got, I'm lucky. I live a good life now, but man, I would have been on the other side of that. And I see these kids when I'm on vacation at the Four Seasons with their iPhone fives. And I'm like, my wife doesn't have an iPhone 5 yet. She's waiting to come out of contract. And these 12-year-old kids, three or four of them running around with iPhone fives, and you know these kids in the ghetto have nothing. Yeah. I was, on, I was on a plane last week, family of five. Each kid had their own iPad. And it's like, oh, it exacerbates the kid. digital divide. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and these pork, and it, you know what? Where's the best educational software? Where's the best educational videos? On your iPad. Yeah. There's all these free apps or dollar, two dollar apps. There's Khan Academy, and the rich kids get more access to better tools and better content. And what do the poor kids get? They get screwed again. Yep. And by the time a kid comes into uh, kindergarten, Oh, they're screwed. He's coming late. out of a middle class. If they haven't gone to a pre-K now, I mean, the stuff my daughter is doing in, in I'm sorry, um, nursery school is ridiculous. I'm, I didn't even go. You know where I went for nursery school? My grandmother's house, my Irish grandmother, and I hung out with my drunk Irish grandfather who so took us to bars. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> God damn it. Now I'm all, that always now happens. Now you're all worked up. I always happen at the end of the show. I get crazy. <sighs> 
Stephen, I wish you a lot of luck with Freedom Pop. I'm really rooting for this company. I'm kicking myself that I didn't get to get it on the angel round. I don't know where I was on your uh, radar, but apparently not on the radar. I got to go buy some size shares in the secondary market. This is going to be a billion dollar company within three years. I'm telling you right now. I'm I'm betting right now Google buys this company for a billion dollars. In Google or Amazon will buy Freedom Pop within three years for a billion dollars. I guarantee it. Anybody want to make a sushi bet? Because I will bet that. And if you make the sushi bet, you automatically win. I can't turn down Steve Jobs, but I may be able to turn down Larry if you knocked on my door. So, No. No, because you know what? Google would put a good price on it, and they would give you the ability to reach such a large group of people that it would, it would, it would accomplish your mission. It would be like an acceptable outcome because you know they wouldn't screw it up. Like, look at their acquisition of YouTube and how well that's gone. I mean, Stephen Chen and uh, Stephen and um, whatever. Anyway, the, fa yeah. the founders of YouTube must be looking and be very happy with the progress that and the, and the stewardship of Google. That's true. That's true. They haven't killed the brands. No, they, I mean, it, they've exploded YouTube. It's the platform now, so. In every country, 800 million yeah. people a month. It's more important than Facebook, I think. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, if you want to get a Freedom Pop, and I highly recommend you do, just buy one. Even if uh, even the rich members of my audience, which is the majority of the audience, just go ahead and buy one of these things for 100 bucks, so you support the company. Buy that little Oreo. What do you call the? Uh, the Photon. Buy the Photon. So you have it as a backup. It's 100 bucks, but you buy it. They probably make 20, 30 bucks a margin. So that's good. You're, you're helping this company that's doing a good thing, and you want them to survive. And you got it as a backup in case, you know, you need to, you're over on your current plan or whatever. Go buy your kids one of these casual 2G plans for only $17.99 a month. It's a brilliant idea. Freedompop.com, freedompop.com, and follow at Freedom Pop. You guys got it at Freedom Pop, right? Yep. And you're at Stokols, S-T-O-K-O-L-S. Correct. On Twitter. Uh, you're hiring, I'm sure? Yeah. What kind of people are you looking to hire? Right now we're looking for engineers primarily. <clears throat> uh, what kind of engineers? Get some more specific here. Yeah, so big gap right on front end, so we can kind of do more on the mm -hmm. uh, on the front end piece. And the then, website's a little broke, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but all right. Nah, come on, man. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to this, actually... I mean, try, try, the design of the... Web, well, actually, it's all right. The, I'm just saying it could be a lot better. Could, uh, could be a lot better, absolutely. I give you a uh, seven and a half of eight. So you, you, get, you get an extra point and a half if you get a great world-class designer. Well, well, it's okay. Go. It's serviceable. But that, you don't want to be putting all your money into the design of the site. You want to be putting it into lowering the prices. So. Exactly. So if you're a great designer, and who else? What else are you looking for? Front end? Uh, outside of that, we're actually... What about apps? you got to have some apps to complement this stuff, well, right? I just, you just introduced me to a pretty good app developer right I here. I did. I'm so. Sundeep from Extreme Labs. Yeah, we, we do have an iOS app, and we have an Android app that's launching in about a week. What do we, the apps do exactly? So the apps right now... Is, it's account management primarily. So you can go uh, in there, you can see how much you've used, sure. and you can also earn more free. So you can oh, earn more okay. free through offers or inviting friends through the app. I love that idea, though, of, you know, like, oh, um, yeah, I, I can do certain behaviors to, or, you know, as long as it doesn't get, like, you're not going to get to that cheesy, like, I'm going to earn more mana for this game kind of stuff, or... Nah, well, I mean, we, we try to keep the offers pretty legit. Now, yeah. some of the offers are, like, print a coupon to Chili's and you get 20 megs or something That's fine, lines. that's fine. That's quid pro quo. Yeah. That's quid pro quo. And uh, if Chili's is the audience for a free device, that's fine. And if kids have more time than money and they print out the coupon, it's worth yeah, it. It's amazing how many people actually go down the earn path uh, to earn yeah. the free versus yeah. just paying oh, is what it? would have costed a, a What percentage of people do the uh, extra little I, things? I don't know that off the top of my head, but I'm Double looking digit. at the revenue that's coming through the earn. Ah. It's more significant than I would have expected. See, that's what I think is I think you guys are going to get to the point at which, like, you remember the company Free PC that Bill Gates, uh, Bill Gross did? I don't. You get a PC for free. It was an idea lab company. And the idea was give people like a six or seven hundred dollar PC for free if they buy internet access or give it to them for free if they watch ads. And now that the devices are so cheap, you know, you could give somebody an iPad, you know, like a seven inch ninety nine dollar thing and if they if you can make a dollar a month off them, two dollars, you have to make like whatever, five dollars a month off of them to make it eventually work. But when the pads get down to forty nine dollars like they're yeah. in India. You know, maybe, those Android pads are getting sub ninety nine bucks already. It's crazy. I mean, the, the nominal cost, it's going to be like, it's going to be free. People are going to have them like, you're going to get, I think you're going to go to like restaurants or cafes or places and there'll just be like stacks of tablets. Yeah. And just pick one up. If you steal it, it'll be like stealing a set of head. You know, it's going to be like headphones. It's like stealing the Sports Illustrated off the doctor's table. Or the perfect analogy, or stealing the headphones from an airplane. Like at a certain yeah. point, they collect. Remember, they used a whole thing. We're going to give out the headphones. Now we're going to collect the headphones. To like headphones are cost us two dollars. Keep them. Right. We bake it into the price. Yeah. And if you leave them, we'll have them cleaned up. But please keep them. It's our gift. That's what Freedom Pop's going to get to. It's going to be so cheap. You're going to be able to give these devices away for free. 
Um, I'm open. And I'm guessing first name or last name at freedompop.com works for email. I'm not going to give out your email, but if you were... Yeah, you just did, but yeah. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. 50-50 now. 50-50. Uh, either Stephen or uh, Skull Calls will work at Freedom Pop. And if you're a great designer, listen, I think this is an important company. You can go there and have a sense of mission. So if you're a great web designer or, or app developer in Los Angeles or a surrounding area, please email them and you know, be part of something important in the world that's closing the digital divide. Uh, Stephen, it's great having you as a guest. Hey, great being here. Thanks. Uh, continued success with Freedom Pop. And if this comes on second market or something like that and you're an accredited investor, I, I think you're going to stock up on the shares. I'm not telling you what to do or giving you investment advice, but the second I have a chance to buy 25 dimes, I'm going to buy a cranberry off of Stephen right now. That's what's going to happen in the post show. I'm going to try to buy some of his common shares. We'll see you again next time. Oh, thanks, Igloo, and thanks... Um, oh, my God. Thanks, Sharefile uh, from Citrix. What a great... Great to have a new sponsor always great and we're sold out for six months thank you jason demont for uh selling out the show thank you for brandis for solving all these audio problems and making everything flawless and traveling following me everywhere i go around the country and taking 6 a.m flights i know that's brutal uh and carrying all that heavy equipment that's brutal i'm not helping you with it and uh thanks karen for booking great guests we'll see you all next time on this week in startups